Hi, everybody. It's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Monday. I don't know if you can see him, but my cat is sitting right here in the middle of the enhancement. So when I switch satellites, you'll probably be able to see it better. Thought we'd start with the tropics this morning because we do have this tropical disturbance well out into the eastern Atlantic. Uh, this is 30 degrees west longitude, just to give you an idea how far out this thing is. It's uh, southwest of the Cape Verde Islands or the Cabo Verde Islands. And it's pretty disorganized at this point. Uh, if you know, you want to kind of get an idea of where there might be eventually um, some kind of a representation of a center of low pressure when it forms. It's probably around nine north or so. And again, for now, it looks very disorganized. And uh, we'll look at it on the um, water vapor imagery. It's coming in right there on the southwestern, the southeastern corner of the picture. You can see it right here. Uh, there's uh, some convection developing and it's embedded in a fairly moist area here across uh, the uh, tropical Atlantic south of 15 degrees north. Now we do have dry air. You can see the drier air to the north right over here in the uh, brownish white shade uh, moving westward. So uh, there's there is uh, you know a rather dry air environment to the north and we have you know this upper air storm sitting in the central Atlantic. So north of 20 degrees north we we're getting <clears throat> southwesterly winds, strong southwesterly winds aloft. But the general environment across the tropical Atlantic south of 20 degrees north is going to become more favorable for development as the uh, strong wind shear conditions in the upper level uh, of the upper levels of the atmosphere relax. And that is an environment that tropical systems like. We also have a big upper low. Oh, there he goes. He's saying goodbye now. He's found something else that's more interesting. Um, but you, there's also a strong upper low. You can see it here over uh, Cuba, and that is moving westward. So we're going to watch all these puzzle pieces over the next several days uh, to see how this um, all plays out. Now, uh, as far as uh, intensity is concerned, I'm going to go to that first. All the um, models that forecast intensity pretty much take this to tropical storm strength at some point, and a couple of them even bring it to minimal hurricane. You can see it here uh, toward the end of the week and into next weekend. Uh, but the cluster of them seem to be keeping this more in the lines of tropical storm strength at least through 120 hours. So that would uh, be through Friday. And I would suspect that um, we'll probably not see any um, development into a tropical depression until Wednesday at the earliest uh, based on uh, what we're seeing with respect to weather models. Now, there was already been chatter about this and it's just it's amazing to me that the chatter gets <clears throat> uh, appears longer and longer now that we have to start uh, talking about this sort of stuff. Um, you know, I'm trying to look at this basically from a pretty, very objective perspective uh, and this would be the second tropical system to form in the tropical Atl in the tropical Atlantic before the month of August, which is very unusual. Uh, we had Brett in mid June, which is almost not unheard of, and and now we have this one, which is probably going to be, you know, going to form. It's not overly unusual, but it is pretty still fairly rare for the early part of July. The uh, surface features here. We're looking at Wednesday, and I just want to show you, you know, what exactly do we have here? We have this big surface high. OK, so with the uh, low level winds across the Atlantic are basically from east to west. So if this system stays weak, uh, where it's reflected more in the bottom of the atmosphere rather than the top, it's going to react more to the conditions at the bottom of the atmosphere, in which case uh, it'll take uh, a more of a westerly course. But if the system develops faster, as uh, the GFS has, for example, and a few of the other models, not all, uh, then we're going to start to respond more to the upper air with uh, something like this. And when we take a look at the uh, upper air uh, with regards to the uh, tropical system, and we'll take a look at it here, you do have um, a, a pretty n strong yet narrow ridge in the Atlantic. And you can see it actually extends you know, out uh, to the west. So you've got strong westerly winds north of 35 degrees north, and you have a general west or west-northwest flow aloft uh, across the Atlantic. There's your upper high. There's another one sitting over there, another reflection of it there, maybe a little upper low there in the middle. 
but the flow would be west or west northwest in the higher levels of the atmosphere. So if this were to become a, a tropical storm uh, in a hurry, it'll start responding more to the upper level winds um, rather than the low level easterlies. So going forward, that ridge remains intact. And there's the reflection, by the way, that little, those two little circles there, that's the reflection of the system in the upper layers of the atmosphere. And the track on the GFS is generally west-northwest. Now, you're, you're going to notice, too, here with the jet stream in the east, you do have, and, you know, we've seen this for week, many weeks now, this tendency for troughing to develop in the eastern part of the United States. Now, if the trough is far enough east, what will wind up happening is this thing will get caught by that trough and then turn northward and then northeastward. And that's what the GFS is telling us, at least, that the uh, jet stream in the east, you're going to have this broad, you know, west-southwest flow developing offshore, and the trough does extend south down uh, into the uh, southeastern part of the United States. So that would keep any system from hitting the United States at all. It would just sort of recurve uh, and move to the northeast. Now, a lot of this is going to depend, obviously, on timing. So, you know, you get the trough, one trough pulls out, but already another trough comes in its place. So, you know, you look, looking at this upper air profile, I would say, if, if this is correct, that there's enough weakness in the ridge and enough troughing in the east so that anything, you know, that develops would wind up staying offshore based on uh, what the GFS has been telling us. Now, we've seen a few runs here do different things, and we're going to continue to see that. I just want to maintain a certain degree of calmness and logic when looking at this all this stuff. Um, you know, you're going to see posts on Facebook um, implying threats and that kind of thing. Um, just ignore, okay, really, just ignore. I, I kind of have a policy. For those of you who've been with me long enough or if you're new uh, to, to my page and my work, you know, I, I don't approach things like this. If I tell you, you know, if I tell you to worry, there's a legitimate reason for me for for, for then there's a then there's a legitimate reason for you to be concerned. Uh, until until then, you know, we just stay we just stay as impartial observers and just leave it at that. So we'll see how this plays out. The Hurricane Center ranks as a 70% probability of becoming a tropical storm uh, in the next five days, or at least a tropical cyclone of some sort in the next five days. So uh, they do rate the probability as pretty high, but only 20% going into the next 48 hours. In the long-range pattern, by the way, going back to regular weather, you, could, you see how the, the, the east continues to be under the influence of general troughing uh, to some degree in the longer term. So, you know, we continue to, uh, to advocate the idea that it cannot get hot, in the, at least in the northeast and in the mid-Atlantic states, with the presence of all this troughing uh, that's going on. You see it here at the end of this week. You know, here's your jet stream at the end of the week. You know, that dips down, lifts out. There's another one that tries to replace it. And then that dips down and lifts out. One of those troughs actually picks up whatever tropical systems there is. And then we continue to see, you know, the, the uh, appearance of some troughing here in the east. In the west, by the way, is going to be dominated by a big ridge uh, that's going to be changing in strength over time. And when we I'll roll it back, you know, just starting from this week, you have this big upper high here in the western part of the United States. So it's going to continue to be very hot across much of the southwest with that high like that. And that heat will make its way up uh, into uh, the the uh, western part of the northern plains and the northern Rockies and into parts of the Pacific Northwest. That ridge just kind of sits there all week in through next weekend. You know, at times it gets flattened a little bit because you get these short waves that come in uh, from uh, the Pacific into western Canada. Uh, but the ridge is still primarily uh, wanting to be uh, in the western part of the United States, and that's going to continue to favor the idea of troughs in the um, eastern part of the U.S. So let's go to just the day-to-day -day weather here. I'll use the U.S. view because there really isn't, uh, you know, a whole lot going on uh, in the short term. And 
as far as the rest of this holiday weekend is concerned, we have a great day today that's starting off here. But we do have a weather front that's coming through with a reinforcing surge of dry air. So there might be an isolated shower or thunderstorm late this afternoon into tonight. Uh, Storm Prediction Center has a marginal risk of severe weather. Uh, there's actually uh, some uh, heavier thunderstorm activity for the middle Mississippi Valley and parts of uh, Kansas and into Oklahoma. You see it there. This high builds in for the 4th of July, so the weather should be pretty decent. Although the GFS wants to keep clouds and some showers not that far away. So uh, I'm going to want to keep an eye on that. It kind of stalls that front out all of a sudden. So um, we'll see whether that whole sway or not. Uh, I'm still thinking that the weather should be pretty good, um, even though the GFS wants to be a little more bullish with regards to precip. And let's going into Wednesday and Thursday. Late this week, we start to see low pressure at another front approaching, which will open the door for some showers and thunderstorms. Looks like Friday and then maybe again on Saturday before weather conditions improve on Sunday. And in the West, it looks like just other than the diurnal showers and thunderstorms, uh, we're going to see uh, the hot weather continuing. Here's a reflection on the GFS of the tropical system on day nine, uh, which is the middle of next week, off the uh, south, well off the southeast coast, and already turning away to the northeast um, and and going out. So we still have uh, the idea of fronts coming through every few days in the northeast, uh, keeping things from getting too hot for for too long, and then the usual amount of shower and thunderstorm activity that you'll see around the country. So, you know, we'll keep our eyes on everything, of course. Uh, let me just look, let's look just real fast. I just want to take a look, because now I got my curiosity peaked a little bit with regards to tomorrow. Uh, and I'll we'll look at the NAM model to see if the NAM wants to keep precip close. <clears throat> and let's backtrack a little bit. The NAM would suggest no. You know, we do have that chance for an isolated shower or storm, which it doesn't really do too much with this evening. And then that front kind of settles itself across the mid-Atlantic states. It would uh, seem to me that this would be a fairly decent day to for tomorrow with plenty of sunshine and comfortable humidity and no chance for showers or storms. So the GFS might be a little overzealous with that idea. All right, folks, uh, have a great day. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the tropics. I have a tropical weather post up on my website, meteorologistjoechoppy.com, so you might want to check that out to talk a bit more about what's going on. And, of course, uh, other uh, weather forecasts and weather information are av available there. And if you're heading to New York City, you might want to take a look at Angry Ben's post on nycweathernow.com uh, to figure out what the weather <clears throat> will be like if you're heading into New York City for Fourth of July fireworks tomorrow night. I think the weather should be fine and dandy. And uh, thank you and welcome to my uh, new subscribers to YouTube. We've been picking up a few every day. Uh, hope you are enjoying my videos. They come up at least once a day, sometimes twice if uh, either I feel inspired or if the weather calls for it. Um, be Feel free to leave any comments, criticisms, or questions. Just when you do, please let me know where you are geographically so that um, I can give you a, a more accurate response. And um, have a great third of July, and I hope you're all. I've all, all of you were creative enough to make this a four-day holiday weekend. And in which case, you're not going to go back to work till at least Wednesday, or maybe you took the whole week off. Just enjoy yourselves. I'm. I didn't. I'm working all week. All right, folks. Have a great day.